Hello everyone, I am Bradley Sward, Associate Professor of Computer and Information Science at the College of DuPage in Glen Ellen, Illinois. And this video today is going to take a look at a specific algorithm here, so it's not necessarily just pure programming, but it's pure programming in terms of figuring out how to make compression work. And so we're all familiar with zip files and tarballs and, and all different sorts of stuff. RARs and 7-zips and all sorts of stuff you guys send me, which I refuse to put onto my computer these days. I'm, a, <laughs> I'm an old man. Zip is my only way of doing things these days. Um, that's just the way things go. And so we're going to take a look at the, you know, basically one of the first and awesomest compression algorithms that there are out there. And Mr. Huffman is the one who came up with that one, or Dr. Huffman probably. David Huffman as a PhD student at MIT. And I'm pretty sure he's the one who came up with this. I'm pretty sure he got his doctorate. I'm not going to do any more research into it. But I'm pretty sure if we're using this stuff to this day, his name is entrenched in computer science history. I'm pretty sure he got his PhD. So the whole point here is say all of the code that I gave you uh, basically implements his algorithm basically from these building blocks. The whole, the whole idea here is I have a structure set aside for you, and it happens to be uh, you know, a binary tree. And what, what you do is you just start from the top, you start from the root node, and you kind of ski your way down. Zero goes one way and one goes another because it's binary. It's you know, one of two ways you could go from a specific node. And once you hit a dead end, it can only be that character. So like, if it's zero, there's my A. If it's one, zero, there's my B. If it's one, one, zero, that's a D. If it's one, 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 that's a C, at least in this simple example. And so the algorithm itself, the algorithm itself works it out for all the different letters that you see, or all the different characters, or whatever it is you're using inside of your, your code base or in your data. And it figures out a, you know, basically the best way or a best way to compress that data to use the least amount of bits. Doesn't mean, you know, what it means is like this, an A is going to be one bit, but some of the characters are going to be three. But in that case, because the reason why A only has one bit is because it's used the most. It's used three times in a simple example. So it makes sense to, for the things that get used the most to, use, to try to use the least amount of bits to get the job done. And for things that aren't used as often, like D, we can use more. And we can even go beyond, you know, like if you're thinking of a byte, it could even go beyond eight because we make up for that and then some by reducing the amount of bits we use for the things that come up the most. So that's, that's where the idea comes from. Of course, and of course, it's a brilliant idea, and it's a brilliant implementation of a brilliant idea. So like in this case, like if you took something that was eight bytes of storage and you could reduce it to nine bits, I mean, isn't that, and that's what compression's all about. So that's what's cool about that. And so now from here to there to all this other stuff, let's take a look at our problem. So here we go. My computer is slow, so slow it hurts, compresses to this string of ones and zeros. And you don't have to go any, you know, look at this here. Here's my, here's my M, here's my M. And this is all set up, again, for dead ends. There's no, you know, once you hit this, there's nothing else in this sequence that shares. It's all subsets. So, like, there's 0, 0 for a space. You will see throughout here, there's no other character that has a 0, 0. For n, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, there's no other character that decodes to 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. So when I, when I see a, one of these specific patterns, I don't have to do any necessary if checks. I just say, oh, OK, cool. I hit a dead end. There's no other character that hits this. It's an n. Let's move on. Let's go on to something bigger and better. Let's go on to the next character and move on and move on and move on. So that's where the idea comes from. So if, to decode this thing back, I would start from the whatever data structure this thing is, you know, whatever my data structure is, start at the root node and work until I hit the z the n zero here and go, oh, I'm at a dead end. This must be the m character. Let's start back at the you know, back at the start here and now go to the next one. And that would end up being a y. One zero zero one zero. You could see it right here. And that's just how you know, this is how you would decode character for character. And you could do it by hand, but it's gonna take you a while, but you can do it. And so, and but the 
problem here is us for us to do this in you know with with a computer science background and do this instead of doing it by hand have a program do it for us much faster much more efficiently and it can do any file we want in a matter of milliseconds so that's where we're coming from so i left you guys this little bit of code here to figure out i've given you everything you need here is the node basically here's the head pointer here is the file that has all the ones and zeros in it and just keep doing your little skiing and working your way to figure out what character is what and then just print out the mystery string and if i remember right it's probably something holiday related or something like that it's just, i don't recall exactly what it is but i'll figure it out when i get to it at the end of this video so the first thing i want to do here you know we're definitely not going to return this that's that's great for just getting started but what we're going to do is we're going to open our file. So it's an input file stream. File, and whatever the file name is. And I believe, I don't have to worry about that down below. Test data. No, I think we're good here. And so, um, and we're just, and if you really want to, you could test for the, you could test to make sure it works. But I'm not going to, that's a little beyond what I want to do. Well, what the hell. If uh, file name, or file dot good bad fail then I can print something out and halt my program oops, I'm just gonna say oops I don't even want to do this right now so I'll just put oops and then we'll just do an exit one on my program let's try this out let's see all happy oops no we're not all happy here we all happy now okay now we're all happy now okay good so there we go. It doesn't exit, so therefore the file opened properly. So if it fails, then this. Okay, and then otherwise we can do stuff here. And what I'm going to do, just to make, just for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to take the whole file and throw it into a vector. A vector of... Uh, do we want ints? I guess we could... No, we want characters, right? Ones and zeros. So we'll just say, um, we'll call it input. Vector of characters. And I can say while file name, I'm sorry, while file dot eof equals f false. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to get a character. I'm going to get it from the file, and then I'm going to push it input dot pushback. I'm going to push back that character. Okay, and then when I'm all said and done here, I'm going to file that close. Okay, so when I hit the mystery here, let's let's take a look to see what our data structure, what our vector of characters look like. Looks like. Okay, so it looks like input is 2,351 ones and zeros all thrown together. Boom! It's so there we go. And so now we need to go ahead and take this and work our way through and figure out what's going on and do our business. So let's make that work. Okay, so what I was saying here is we're going to need to know every character, so we can use for every character, uh, we can call it character, in our input, let's do stuff. All right, so as I was saying, okay, so for every character we're going to check, check, check stuff. However, first thing we're going to do here is we're going to say, where are we currently? And I don't have to, I don't have, I don't, let's see, I don't have to go crazy on the constness of this thing. Yes, you do. You can put const in two places if you haven't seen that in other videos and other places. Um, I'll call it current equals node. See, I just can't ever remember which const I have to put. Not happy with that, so I'll put the I'll put the const up front. And nope, not happy with that. Um, oh, oh, <laughs> node. Is it happy? Good, it's happy. So let's see const. Let's just make sure again. Yeah, it's not happy with that const, but it's but it's it's okay with that const. Okay. So just a quick refresher of the two consts. One of the consts I can never I can I've only been doing this for many <laughs> twenty five years now. I can never remember which one's which. One of them is the one that makes it so you can't change the actual address that the pointer is pointing to. Like I could say like, oh, you're pointing here. Like no, you're pointing over here now. That one, one of that is that, and then the other one is the one that says whatever I'm pointing to, I can't modify. So if I try to modify whatever I'm pointing at, 
I would be willing to bet that the one up front here, that's the one that, uh, that matters here. Okay, so we're going to start from here, and we're going to say, okay, take a character in, and if the character is equal to a zero, and in this case, there's only two different types. There's either a zero or a one. So I say, if the character is a zero, well, my node is going to equal node going down the zero path, right? I keep saying code. Node going down the zero, which is a node pointer, right? That's just, and again, I'm not describing everything. You've spent plenty of time going through all the code in my, in my program to get this work. But there's a node pointer that basically the left, basically go to the left. Otherwise, go to the right. Go down the zero path or go down the one path. And this is where things are breaking down. Expression must be a modifiable L value. And do I need, do I even need the const? Yes, I do. So give me a second to fix my constness. Const, that this is where I'm saying const is always a chore when it comes to this kind of stuff. Um, so let me see what I can do and then we'll come back to you. And again, this is another one of those times where you're like, Brad, you're, what, what, you're, a dunder, you're a dunderhead. What were you doing? I was doing the wrong thing because I'm thinking, talking, and this is complicated stuff. So, yes, <laughs> I want to modify current, and I want to be able to go to, I, I'm just using node or code or whatever. Let me just fix this up. Say, okay, whatever node I'm currently pointing to, if the character is a zero, go to the left or go down the zero path. And otherwise, if it is not a zero, if it's a one, go down the one path. So the const node pointer is correct for this kind of situation here. Okay, so good to know. And so now, this, now the question comes up after I go through this and I go down, and, and the last question was, is this a dead end? And so if my current and its uh, uh, zero path is equal to null pointer, and the one path is equal to a null pointer. That is exactly how we know we've reached the end of our path here. We're at a dead end. So if I tried, if I came back around and tried to go down again, and I went, and I'm like, "Hey, current is equal to null pointer," like this thing will start crashing on me. So this is our check. If I reach the inside of this if statement, that means there's nowhere else to go. And because of that, then I can print out. Currents, oops, not in quotes. Currents value, I think it's a character, let's make sure. Um, how often, nope, not that. I want its data. There it is, the character data. Print out that one character, and don't worry about, uh, don't worry about end lines, or you're not gonna wanna print every character, one, every character on its own line. This is good to go. And then I can say current is equal to the original node. And just for the moment here, let's just see, because this is, I'm just printing for now. We'll, we'll figure this out in a second here. But let's see what happens when I do this. Did I get it all? If I did, it's going to be an easy video. And we did it. And so this thing decodes to, you don't know about me without, without you have read a book by the name of Adventures of Tom Sawyer. So this is Huck Finn, right? So that's where this is going from. So it pretty much figures out everything here. And so instead of printing this out, and since I'm returning a string, right here I can say, give me my std string, my, my uh, code phrase, just an empty code phrase. And instead of printing out this thing, all I have to do now is go over here, up, instead of saying print, and just say code phrase plus equals, and then return code phrase. What is the mystery phrase? That will work for us. And for whatever reason, I'm not going to worry. Don't worry about this much. This is this warning. I don't. I I've haven't spent too much time on it. But this is the the code isn't there's the code isn't necessarily wrong. But I and and I'm not dereferencing a null pointer because I'm t because I know that when I get in here that there's going to be something I can access. And it's, and it could be a null pointer. Anyway. I don't. I, so again, I don't understand what's C two eight one eight two how to fix that right now and I'm not necessarily worried. So now coming back, there's no print statements inside of the utility function. There might be if your file doesn't open properly, but the file opens, puts everything into the vector, processes the vector, 
and then spits out the string back down to somewhere around wherever this thing down here prints this guy out and we call it a day and so there we go and that does it that, that is all you need to do I, I did all the the heavy lifting for you guys but that's not to say that there isn't more heavy lifting in trying to figure out what the heck this code does all these comments and all this stuff here how are you supposed to know that's I say and ultimately like the amount of code you had to write wasn't a lot but to figure out where that code goes and what code to put there that might have taken you quite a bit of time and so uh, that's why this is worthy of a homework assignment and we're, and of course worthy of a video to describe how to solve this problem so as always if I misspoke about something or if you have questions or concerns about the work I'm doing here and working with you guys please let me know at swordb at cod.edu or contact me here on the YouTubes and I will get back to you as soon as I can so that is everything that we wanted to show with Huffman uh, you know basically going ahead and using recursion and doing all sorts of crazy stuff here to, to make all of this work now we're ready to, to move on to bigger and better things so i hope you guys have a great day and it's thanksgiving week for me here so if have a great thanksgiving at some point if you're not watching the video during thanksgiving have a great day have a great week have a great everything see you sometime soon bye bye